Hello, everyone, and welcome to day two of the Onog Summer Circuit here. Uh, we have uh, we have a new guest. We have Strife Crow subbing in here. How are you doing today? <laughs> Good. Got pulled up. Like I heard about this like that. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see. I don't know if I'm ready, but my yeah. body is ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, in this feature, we have uh, a mix of invited players and a mix of players who have qualified uh, either uh, through winning opens or through their accumulation of Geico points. Uh, the players that we'll see today are going to be uh, Zele, uh, Risen, VLPS, and Muzzy. You guys, I think, have heard, if you guys are into the tournaments, you guys have heard a little bit from each of them, I believe. First up, we'll have Zele versus Muzzy. You can see with the the X's on those classes, we are playing a little bit of a different format. Uh, we're playing uh, bring four decks. It's conquest, but one gets banned. And while some players are bringing, you know, just their their best ladder decks, as, as we have been seeing in general in the tournament, uh, yesterday's first seed uh, from Group A, Dog, pulled a little bit of a different strategy. He made uh, three or four, four decks that are all weak to Druid. Uh, and well, one of them was Druid, I guess, if that counts. Um, and uh, they were just control decks that were good against most other decks, and he just banned Druid every single time. So kind of like the the class denial strategy seems to be pretty effective from what we've seen so far. Today we're going through Group B. Yesterday was Group A, as I mentioned. Dog was the first seed from A, and it was followed up by the uh, by Lead Paint coming in and going through the Decider bracket. What do you think of this format, Strife Crow? The uh, the conquest plus ban. I mean, at first I, I didn't really like it back then, but I mean, at this point I don't really mind anything that's, I guess, not conquest because it's just been, with conquest been here forever. Like mm -hmm. you know, this has been the format forever, and now with the game being kind of like, the it's the longest it's ever been without a patch or an expansion. I think right now. Yep. Uh, right. So, you know, <laughs> we just want to see some different stuff at this point. Yeah. Well, this is a little bit different. Uh, it really depends on how the players want to plan their strategy through the format. Um, you know, it could just be that players just use the same strategy as the regular conquest. They just bring their best decks. But, you know, there is some redemption to see that so far the player who has done the best has, uh, you know, kind of routed away from that common strategy and has shown some success with it. Uh, in our first match, it is Zele. Zele is uh, the second invited player on the list, uh, and he is up against Muzzy. Muzzy is here as he is the uh, second place Geico point holder. First place was uh, Astrogation, who played yesterday and did not advance to uh, the final of tomorrow. But uh, Muzzy will have a chance uh, getting Geico points. You have to do pretty well in the open tournaments, and if you guys do want to, want to participate, they happen uh, almost every single week. It's uh, pretty easy to get started. If you guys want to go to geico.onog.gg, sign up, see what it's all about, and you guys can also uh, enter your chance to win a, uh, I believe it's Cyber Power PC. So should be a... Uh should do that kind of stuff, at least uh, in, in the breaks. Um, now, as we get uh, in, into the matchup here, we are going to get into the games pretty soon. But is, does anything stand out uh, out of the normal for you, for you Striker, uh, when you look at the, the classes the players have brought, or maybe the, the bands? Uh, the classes look pretty normal to me. Mm -hmm. uh, the only difference is Warrior and Paladin. Uh, those are all probably top four classes anyways, so... Nothing really sticks out as far as classes goes. Bands, I guess everyone's just scared of Zoo. I mean, they're bringing Druid, both of them, right? And so that's mm -hmm. probably why they're scared of Zoo. Uh, it's also good against, like... Actually, Zoo's, uh, Zoo is actually one of the hardest counters to uh, Aggro Shaman. Even though Aggro Shaman doesn't have that many counters, uh, mm -hmm. Zoo's one of, Zoo is probably maybe one of the two top hardest decks for that, so... All right. Well, uh, going into game one, we see Zele bringing the uh, typical, because there really isn't anything other than a typical Druid deck. And Muzzy is bringing uh, what looks to be a fairly aggressive Shaman deck, which, again, is is fairly standard these days. Yeah. What do you, what do you from, like to play these days, Strife Crow? I'm kind of curious. I like to play like a mid-range Shaman with a lot of... When you make a lot of totems, and like to play mid-range Paladin with, with a lot of hero powers. I pretty much like to click the hero power button a lot. I like to buy a tank up warrior. Well, if you like clicking hero That's power a lot, you can always uh, you know route your skills to face hunter. How about yeah. that one? 
that that one's pretty good. I don't like that kind of I don't like that kind of hero power as, as much. <laughs> I like making making dudes the most. Yep, the dude yeah. creation is pretty fun. So in terms of the openers here, um, it looks pretty good for both players. Um, I feel like the the druid has to have ramp because it's it's a little bit less consistent in the early game to kind of keep up. Um, if the druid is ever in the, in that spot where it has to it has to trade for the board, it feels like a losing battle. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, but he, uh, Innervate is pretty much ramp at this point, so his his hand's actually pretty good. He does decide to hero power the Lepernome instead of Keeper here. And I'm assuming he can maybe try to keep her whatever comes out here, which doesn't really end up that great for the keeper. But well, it's not terrible, right? I mean, you can yeah. just keep her it and hit it for two, and then the keeper trades up, and it's unlikely the shaman will burn four damage and to kill the keeper. It's very, very hard. Exactly. Now, we actually know that he he does have a lot of burst, but even then, that's a very that you don't really even come up behind there. I think. Just because it costs five mana for a lot of burst uh, this early, and all the ma- mana like right now, these are the tempo turns. So, assuming he doesn't want to spend five for that. There's a few setup plays here for the next turn in terms of damage, but they're all kind of weak. I feel. Um, yeah, I think you have, you have to play to something. Keeper. Yeah, yeah, I think you have to play keeper. If you iterate out shade, then you don't have any plays next turn as much, right? Mm-hmm. So you want to play shade on three potentially. Yeah, so I, I like the iterate keeper still. Um, these shamans, Firebass told me that uh, Reese, I don't know, I mean, you, you might already know, but uh, the old face shamans are running Ancestral Knowledge, the draw two, mm-hmm. and apparently Chalky has made this new this new face shaman, which which is what Mezzi is running, because you take out the Ancestral Knowledges for uh, Flame Tongue Totem, so it's like maybe even more aggressive, but maybe even even more weak to Zoo as well, because without mm-hmm. that board control, you know, so maybe that's why they're bringing Zoo. I do feel like um, I have seen shaman decks that have run both flame tongue and ancestral knowledge in the past, and I mean they didn't seem particularly uh, bad or anything. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good, right? It's yeah, like, you have Doom, Doom Hammer and Rock Biters, and those leopard names. I was yeah. one of those naysayers on the uh, <clears throat> on the ancestral uh, knowledge, but I mean. In practice, it seems to fish out a lot of powerful uh, burn cards when you need it in the end. Like, yeah. you know, when, when you're in that spot drawing one card at a time, your opponent's at like six or seven life. Um, suddenly, you're drawing live when you have Ancestral Knowledge. But if you replace those with Flame Tongue, you better be winning by more in the early game. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a, I think a card like Ancestral Knowledge mostly is because you can play it, you're almost want, wanting to play in the late game more so than as a two drop. It doesn't matter too much if it's you know two and two or whatever. A little bit more than Arcane Intellect. So well, this, this is, is a little tricky looking, here. Very scary, huh? Yeah. There are a lot of good trades though actually. Uh, I don't think there's a complete board clear nope. for Zillay, but there's pr- a pretty good one kind of. Yeah, you can basically equalize the board and both both players have three one minions. Yeah. So he is gonna make that move. There's no other play here, I think, because the swipe actually gets an extra minion over the wrath. Man, that that rock biter, you don't really want to play that anymore. But I feel like Shade is one of those minions that whenever you can remove it, you kinda of have to. It just races yeah. so much harder than you can after a couple turns. I would play the Rock Rider here still and remove it. His other option is to trade it 3-1 in, but if you think about it, you're only losing, you're not losing 6 damage, you're kind of only losing 3 damage in a way with this Rock Rider because uh, you still have to kill the Shade with the 3-1 otherwise, so you're only getting half, but it's still, like, 3 damage is worth this this play right here, I feel, right? Like, leaving up your 3-1. Mm. This is a little bit tough, because, uh, I mean, you, you kind of want to drew the claw, but you know something bad is happening to it. <laughs> yeah, so I guess Zelay just goes for the kind of safe clear and saves all his minions for next time. Uh, I think I like Hero Power here a lot more than Wrath. It's the same amount of damage, and yeah. his hand's already really minion-heavy, three, four minions, so next, it's nice to have a spell to mix in. <clears throat> 
this going to come down to the Doomhammer damage? Yep. Oh, oh so <laughs> that's a rough card. Suddenly, Ancestral Knowledge is looking a little bit better. Yeah. It looks yeah. hard, because there's no way to get through this many taunts, right? Not yet. Mm -hmm. I think this deck is running um, more chargers than the previous version as well. Like, I think I've seen Double Arcane Golem in a lot of these recent Shaman decks. Yeah, they, they, I think they run Flame Tongue and Arcane Golem together with mm -hmm. the change. Um, so how greedy are you here? <laughs> so I was definitely thinking about it. What to do? Well, the Drew of the Claw is good against just everything. Like, six is just such a good number. I mean, you yeah. can't deal with it with a Lava Burst by itself. You can't deal with a Rock Biter by <clears> itself. <throat> You can deal with it with an Arcane Golem Flame Tongue Totem. <laughs> it actually works out. And he actually does... Oh, wow. That yeah, that's pretty good. Self. That's a pretty good one. I'm surprised he went for the Totem immediately. I mean, I feel like the other three Totems are kind of terrible there. Maybe the way that Muzzy was thinking about it was uh, the Totem would be a minion that would activate Flame Tongue next turn. And regardless, he might just punch it with his Doom Hammer for one. Mm -hmm. you know, if he misses, so the same move, but to set up for another fun tone target potentially. Mm. Well, here you kind of want taunts. You're going to have to heal sometime. The question is, are you going to get a better chance to heal this game than right now? Yeah. I feel like with, I feel like with an empty board, the taunt is is still better. I think the way the way I like to think about it generally is that. Um, if your taunt like ever, if your taunt ever dies, it's like if they ever get through your taunt, um, then you might want to just uh, play the heal, right? But if they can never get through your taunt, then maybe play the taunt instead. If you don't die this turn, anyways, I don't know. I don't know if, how, how much it makes sense. Because if the earlier you play the taunt, like the earlier you stop face damage. So if they don't have enough damage to ever get through time, you should play it as early as possible. Yeah. Well, the, the second Doomhammer draw is bad right now, but it's probably a good thing that he's drawn it, like, period, because uh, he is going to be a bit short on damage overall, I think. Yeah, this... Here I'm pretty much expecting the Arcane Golden Flame Tongue, <clears throat> although he might decide to make a move similar to last turn where he saves the flame tongue and just arcane hero powers and I think I like that and trade and, and the extra charge but I think you have to play the arcane gold yeah well you're at 26 so I mean you can you can chip away at your own health a little bit here that's understandable it's hoping the arcane uh, the flame tongue gets a similar amount of value later innervate that's a good one mmm Still a bit weak, though. Yeah, he, what is Druid really looking for here? I think, personally, um, what Zlay is wanting here is is actually a combo. Maybe, yeah, Ancient War would be really good. I don't know if he runs it. But it's kind of running out of taunts, and at this point, you know against like, Shaman that you can't kind of survive forever, right? At, at some point, you're going to have to open yourself up to dying. At, so I think... I think as uh, just needs to kill kill Muzzy soon somehow too. That's gonna be really tough here. Yeah. That's kind of weird choosing yeah, a Doom Hammer instead of Hero Power. I think that the extra totem is more threatening. I definitely agree. Maybe he's scared of mind control tech. <clears throat> is that possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be. Because this doesn't make some sense. Because mm -hmm. you can always do hammer next turn, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, so Force Nature, that's a good draw. Uh, Force Nature is going to allow for a, a clear here. Yeah. Still can't play anything with it, though. So that part is a bit rough. He's going to have to dodge uh, three extra damage here. And that might be hard to do, because I think Flame Tongue might be the only card that doesn't do any damage by itself in the deck. <laughs> maybe maybe he hopes that you get the slow player your deck, like Tunnel Trog and uh, yeah. Feral Spirits and Non-Chargers. I think Feral Spirits 
Still be came over though. <laughs> yeah, actually, thrust it's, it's gonna do damage. Mm -hmm. That's one of them, I think. It's gonna have to be like a tunnel trog or something as useless as that. Oh, that's close. It is close, but not quite. Well, we're off. The problem with Doomhammer for Zelay is that it just keeps doing damage over and over again. It feels like you know, it's like a clock. It just keeps ticking. Doomhammer has so many charges that it never really runs out. Well, he can heal out of this. Barely. Yeah, he can heal out of this barely. Um... What do you think about healing and just going face and living roots go for a lethal next turn? I feel like if you trade the five damage into the two one, you can't win. Mm -hmm. I hope he draws Let's dead see. again. Yeah, one more dead and just get him a 16. Then you have uh, 14, 13 on board with hero power with the living roots and the. You can yeah, even it's gonna, be, it's gonna be almost impossible to win otherwise. Yeah, I think so. What if you living roots trade and maybe then try top deck savage or maybe you could still win with that, but that's only that one out. I guess Drake. Hmm. No, he's gonna go for the safe play. Oh no he's not! I thought he clicked on the two damage. <laughs> okay, here, so he's just Yeah, he's yeah. going for it. Is that oh, one? No damage. I, I totally agree with this play. I think he should be making this play. Oh, it was not burned. But that's no. Tough. But that might be enough. Yeah. I think a swipe <clears throat> is what he's looking for. By the way, he hasn't. Did he play a swipe? He did play one swipe. Swipe would be lethal, I think, with trade because yeah, you can swipe, swipe face. face and trade the two ones ones yep. into the taunts. So in the very worst case, he has two chances at drawing oh, a swipe. Oh wow. He's gonna so trade this aggressive bit. play is forcing Muzzy to trade. I think if Muzzy didn't trade, scared also of uh, Savage War would have killed him. The two on ones going through mm -hmm. the taunts. So maybe he might have bought himself more time as well. Uh, this, if he actually kills a two one here, he has six life. Oh, that's not what he's looking for. Needs to Azure Drake. Yeah, he's dead right now. Yeah. Needs something, even a removal. Oh, and that's a belcher. <laughs> We're still going. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think that I think he needs to hear a power face. If he hears yeah. power for 2 1, he can die to uh, a few other cards he wouldn't want to normally. I definitely agree with that, yeah. Why is he actually looking in bad shape? Needs an Earthshock, maybe? Earthshock or Lava Burst? Crackle. <laughs> He's actually dead. He's Unit. dead. I think he's dead. Because he takes three uh, by by killing the uh, the Belcher in any case. Mm -hmm. Right. So he's just yeah, dead on board, no matter what. Here. Wow, what a comeback by Zelly there. I like Very Zelly's. Tough. I like Zelly's aggressive move that forced my to put defensive. Mm -hmm. That was a that was a nice one. He had to play around the whole range, and uh, yeah. Savage is too big of a, the part of the range. It looked so, so over for the Shaman, but still the, the Druid pulls it through there. That's pretty amazing. It really goes to show why uh, Druid keeps coming back. It's never never down. Well, maybe, maybe Blizzard will do something about that pretty soon, but maybe one day. as it stands, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. <clears throat> we'll hope. We'll hope in a couple days <laughs> or weeks. Yeah, so uh, Zele gets that first point on the board, but with players playing largely the same decks, uh, there's still a lot of game left here. Yeah, Zele's on a streak, right? He won the Archon House Cup that Omaz just hosted, I think, and then he won this uh, the tournament that I was at, uh, the Esports Arena House of Sealed or something, World Champion of Sealed. He won that as well. But those both of those formats were not constructed, so... Yeah, we'll see how he does in Constructed, because he's on a streak right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, looks like it's a fairly standard Control Warrior here. Uh, the only Control Warrior list I've seen recently is these hyper-defensive uh, Elise Control Warriors. Um, yeah. I feel like you know, playing Fatigue Warrior, which is very close to this deck, 
Um, I'm generally not that scared of uh, this face shaman deck. Yeah, um, I think a lot of these warriors are actually getting a little, a little bit uh, worse against face shaman just because um, I don't know if they're still. I think they're still favored, but a lot of people are taking armor smith right now, right? Because they're trying to win these elite fatigue wars, and they're just running. You know all these removals and armor, but armor smith is one of the most important cards against these face decks. And by cutting armor smith, uh, you're losing a decent amount of percentage points still. Yeah, but at the same time, I think I think bash is like what replaces armor smith. So you still get a little bit of armor out of it, um, and also the fact that he has revenge. I mean, I think revenge kills every single minion in the shaman's deck when it's uh, below twelve, mm -hmm. except the golem. The golem survives with one. Oh yeah. But, Jerry, <laughs> I feel like by the time you're below 12, it's, it's a pretty rough game <laughs> against the Doomhammer. But. Mm -hmm. Alright, this is actually a pretty strong Tunnel Trog, if it can get the... Oh, never mind. Oh, okay. And it's gone! I was going to say, that Tunnel Trog is going to get so strong. Tunnel Trog, Feral Spirits, Lightning Bolt, and then the Doomhammer. It's gonna well, be. It's gonna be. I'm gonna have to wait a turn because of the overload. Yeah. Gonna, but hidden behind the feral spirits, it might actually survive a little bit. Mm -hmm. So. Mm. That's board clear now. There is the clear, but do you really want to burn the death plate on a two three? I think in some cases you'd think about it. No, yeah. Guess I mean, not. Ah, uh, not really. You just kill it, right? I mean, I think. Most Sean, like, I'm, there's an abusive, I guess there's Lepronomes, but most Sean means aren't going to get rolled down anyways, and it's just that face damage every turn is is just the most important, it feels, so. Save yourself damage. Well, there goes the abusive. Sometimes you wouldn't want to do that, but in this case, I think um, you want to create more of a, an opportunity to draw uh, Flame Tank Totems. Oh yeah, that's a really good point. Flint Tongue is huge with another minion here. And he also might be wanting to use all his mana next turn with the Doom Hammer and Lightning Bolt together, so... Mm -hmm. what, what do you think about just playing Sludge Belcher here? Yeah. You gotta go with the minions. The other cards don't really work too well. Like, Revenge mm -hmm. is kinda weak. You're not gonna brawl that board. Yeah. So I guess it's Belcher or uh, Shield Block, and I think you generally want to play minions then... Passing, Which basically. actually, yeah, affects the board. I agree. I mean, part of it is the 3-4, if it trades into the Belcher, it's in revenge range as a 3-1, so... You know, even if he takes that good trade, he still can clear that, so... Mm. Oh, I didn't even realize it was an overload this turn. Yeah. From the Totem Golem. Alright, well, it's still a pretty good clear. It's a, it's a decent revenge here, at least. We're still above 30 life. Yeah. Oh, not anymore. Oh, he's gonna oh. bounce back up over it. That's a good one. Yep, Acolyte's great. Get that revenge. Clear your opponent's board. You have cards, you have weapons, you have a charger. That Gromash is uh, basically a deal four to a minion and enrage itself. Uh, I'm almost sure Grom is coming this turn, no matter what, and just charging into the first minion that he sees. It's so hard for Face Shaman to deal with Grom, right? You can't afford to dump like eight damage. Yeah. In him. Okay, well we're below thirty again. Maybe in this turn we'll we'll stay below. Um, I think there's some possibility he's gonna he's gonna double shield block and play into a brawl next turn. Okay, interesting. I I definitely want to play Crawlum. I just feel like you charge them two one. They can't afford kill it really. They so much damage and it just creates a minion and a clock and you can all shield block later. But it looks like he's happy with the Belcher. Yeah. Oh man, That's double. <laughs> It's a lot of granular damage that has failed to do anything so far. Yeah, and with the revenge being a perfect counter to these Lepronomes too. Well, with one revenge gone, 
You're really only playing around Brawl, I think. I think there's a good chance you're going to play at least one of these. I don't think, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Muzzy doesn't play around anything at this point. Face decks don't play around Brawl that much. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Just one. Nice. Good job, A little Muzzy. bit of play. Yeah. I think here you have to respect the flame tongue, so you gotta go for something. Yeah. Brawl's the best, right? You, you don't fit in anything extra with Revenge. Revenge is a better card than Brawl, I think, later on. Uh, and also, Revenge does not clear the 2 1, so the mm -hmm. Divine Shield. Oh, you could kill it with the, with the weapon. Oh, but yes. you'd have to, like, Revenge execute weapon. <laughs> <clears throat> so, still a lot of damage, right, with that Crackle and Long Burst. How much could that be? Potentially 13 with Spellfire? Yeah, but, I mean, right, you're dropping there, Grom so. here, right? You're going yeah. Weapon into Taunt, Grom into Leper Gnome, and Hero Power. Definitely 100%. I'd be extremely surprised with any other move. This move would still put uh, Zelan 30 life, so there's no way he dies anything at 30. And it just develops the 10 attack minion on board, right? You can always shield block later. Oh, what if you get a see. spell damage minion? So from 30, you could go Crackle for 7, Lava Burst for 6, that's 13 plus 10. You could actually, in oh, some pretty... world, take 23. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Oh, okay, okay. Zelay so, so did even better than us. He just went face with the Grom. He just used the revenge to kill the leper now. <coughs> well, this is a terrible spot to be as a shaman. I feel like you might have to hope they don't have one damage. Wow. No, I don't think so, because there's no way you can kill your opponent in two turns. Oh, yeah. There's See, no way. Yeah, so, I guess. <laughs> But this is this feels pretty unwinnable here too. Yeah, it does. You got the slam. You got the shield block. Hmm. It's gonna go with an execute. I mean, that is the biggest minion in the deck, I believe. No shame in execute. Often, yeah. we actually see it. I think it's a very common thing where newer players would just look at the deck that they're playing and not consider how they could fit their deck to counter their opponents. Like a yeah, card like Execute, yeah. Like it seems like you'd never want to execute a two health minion, but the truth is you're just not going to get a better Execute in this match. Yeah, like sometimes you just shield some Leper Gnomes, right? It's like all the minions are just these these uh, easy to deal with minions. Like the, any spell kills any minion at some point, so you might as well just use anything on anything. At the same same time, like this slam is probably not going to see much value, but I think it still might be might be a bit uh, better to save than the shield slam. Because slam you can cycle potentially, which is pretty yeah. valuable. Plus, you can at least an armor up. You can't armor up if you play slam and at least. Yeah. Still just goes to, for the shield main. I don't, I don't mind either one. I think they're almost the same. This you lose one more armor, but it gives you a 5-5, five five, so it puts a faster clock on well, your opponent. I guess 39 is the magic number. Uh, your opponent's life total past turn 10 when you're the face shaman. Uh, I guess that's see. when you throw in the towel. <laughs> it's a pretty good number to throw in the towel. Sometimes shamans yeah. don't throw Sometimes shamans don't throw in the in the towel after 30 like uh mm -hmm. you play reno and then you're like okay I, I win here there's no way you can kill me after reno and then that two turns later and yeah like, how does shaman do so much damage yep. generally involves rock biters and doom hammers well zele is up 2-0 against muzzy um zele has his own shaman deck left um i think it's been a really long time since i've seen anything but uh, a very aggressive shaman list, so I wouldn't expect anything other than that from Zele. Zele is a little bit of a creative deck builder, but um, even the creative deck builders have having a lot of trouble coming up with any new creations and tournament scenes recently. Definitely, the decks are too strong. 
can't come up with anything that's better. Mm-hmm. So, granted that it is a face shaman, um, I mean, at the very worst, he's got one of those mirrors. Oh, and here we go, that is going to be the mirror. We have to consider that um, in, the opening, in, the, in the opening games, keeping back some information uh, is, is probably the best way to handle things. So if you're a muzzy here, um, I think it's absolutely the correct decision to play the, the shaman first. It's not like point differentials matter. But you do have to win games against the other opponents if you win this matchup. If you, if you lose this matchup. Yeah. So if you're gonna like, even if you had a better matchup, if you're gonna lose this matchup anyways, you might as well lose now and not show more information in these tournaments. Exactly. Yeah. I, I completely think like that as well, because it really depends how probability works in the universe. Mm. <laughs> like, like if I play Shaman versus Shaman now, would I have won ten minutes later? You know? <laughs> Who knows? Crip. Who knows? All right, well, the Totem Golem comes down to try to take care of this Tunnel Trog. Amazi had the option to uh, play the Reactionary Tunnel Trog. Ooh, that is interesting. He's able to, to kill the Totem Golem. But I feel like a Tunnel Trog at three health, it's just a matter of time until until it dies. Like, you know this is... Oh, like, yeah, you mean the Rock Butter and Bolted together. Yeah, it feels a bit, a bit excessive, especially because yeah. your opponent only needs one of those to kill your Tunnel Trog. I agree. I think Sh Shamans have a lot of three damage stuff right with... Yeah. Agreed. I like this move a lot better. Yep. Oh, and there it is. now you just threw it, threw it. <laughs> when he got punished, you used two, you used two lightning bolts against his, and he used one, basically. It is still a pretty tough choice for Muzzy, as whatever he plays is going to have to go up against the Totem Golem. So I think he's not actually able to play the Tunnel Trog. He has to play the uh, the Lepernome. Lepernome, yeah. I definitely like the Lepernome more. It trades better as a 2-1, and uh, Tunnel Trog is just more valuable later, right, when you can combo it with some Overlook cards. Well, you kind of want the board here if you're Zele. And you know he's playing Flame Tongues. We, we don't know if Zele is playing Flame Tongues yet, because there have been a few variants of the stack running around. Yeah. I liked the Lightning Bolt on the 3 2 trade into Lepernome and play your yeah. own Lepernome the most. Save the Rock. Well, first of all, you value your life in this matchup too, so you don't really want to Rock Butter moments like that, anyways, because you're taking the face damage, and you also want to save Rock Butter for the, your Doom Hammer, so. All right. Oh, we have Tunnel Trog, but we can't play too much with it. New Tunnel Trog, Lightning Bolt. That's fair. I, I like the this one and Lightning Bolt a little bit more. I think just a little more mana efficient, and uh, the Creeper's very good here against Lepernome. Uh, I mean, it looks mana efficient, but you can't play anything with three mana next turn anyway, so it's not really. It's the same thing. Yeah, I think he was just scared that. Zelay would remove the Tunnel Trog with a, with the a spell, and then the Lepernum would be uncontested again, so... Mm -hmm. But now, <laughs> this doesn't work out too well after the Feral Spirits either, so... Well, I think it's pretty straightforward still. I think you have to play the Trog, Lightning Bolt, one of the two threes, and attack into the other two three. And, and clear it. And uh, clear your own... Spider yeah. out? Yeah. yeah. Because you're gonna have to get that attack in anyway. Most likely, they're they're gonna go for your uh, your tunnel trog here. Yeah, I think not a lot of people would have made that play to to trade in, but uh, it looks pretty good. Huh, the more the more I look at it, because you getting that one damage into the two three, it's still not wasted because your tunnel trog is two three as well, right? So mm -hmm. he can't get that like it'll die if it trades in. So the damage is not wasted. You get a stronger board, uh, and it's a yes, you need that stronger board. So I actually would have liked to see him trade in there. All right. Well, if you're Zilly here, you you can use that uh, that rock biter and tempo out a a juggler. I think this move is pretty straightforward on the juggler, rock biter. I mean, you can't realistically trade both your minions in. You're trading in four damage anyways. Rock well, only worth six. I think he's thinking of saving. Yeah, he's thinking of saving the knife juggler in order to uh, guarantee juggles on a follow-up turn when the, okay. uh, the creeper is popped. Yeah, that makes sense. I was just thinking it was hidden behind the taunt anyways, and might not actually die. It's got a crackle. 
Pretty weak sauce. Six. <laughs> so wasted one. RNG. He, he wasted it. Next one will be three. For karma. Oh, now oh, the, the juggler's oh, awesome. Look at this. Yeah. You can play uh, here part and time time with it. Get two pings. He's going for a taunt here for sure. He does get it. Perfect. And... I think you can see And you go first. Yeah. You go face. You have to go face. Yeah, in this matchup. Everyone's wearing flame, flame, flame tongue now. Yeah, I heard about this like new flame tongue tech that has kicked in. Face shaman um, seems like everyone's just wearing flame tongue to now. Well, I mean, you can't just throw in the towel if you're muzzy because you're you're really behind here, and then you got to play out absolutely everything yet again. So. The question is, what's more threatening, a juggler or a flame tongue? I mean, you have to play the flame tongue. One one goes into the taunt, right? Yeah, and you get to arcane golem charge something down. I guess if you kill a flame tongue, your arcane golem's not dead, which is important. Mm -hmm. well, I what think I probably charge lava charge. burst the flame tongue here. <laughs> get a oh. free kill. Interesting. Ooh. Okay. That seems like a... Hmm. If he has a taunt here, there's like very small chance he'll be able to do anything counterplay, but he does not. So Arcane Golem is not bad. Yeah. I feel like Zelay just has too much damage there. Right now Zelay has 6 damage every turn on board with uh, Muzzy having just about none. Gets the juggle on the one one. It's big. One out of five here. Nope. So I'd probably start by making a taunt. Try to make a taunt tone right mm -hmm. before trading in the one one. Taunt has to be the best, I think. I think a one one might actually be better than the taunt. Hmm. I think it's debatable because you want as much power on your board as possible. Yeah, that's true. It depends at what point they pick up their uh, charge and face damage rate. Right? Yeah. All right, well, it's a huge board versus nothing, and a Tunnel Trog is not going to do it. Well, Muzzy was pretty resilient with throwing in the towel last game, so maybe he'll uh, he'll play through another turn, but it looks pretty over right now. Yeah, this is Muzzy's uh, tournament life on the line right now, right? No, it's it's just match point. Uh, it's the first okay. first game, so it's it's uh, the players who get two wins. So if Muzzy loses here, and it certainly looks like he's going to lose, uh, he's going to be dropping to the the losers round. But he can win that, and then he can win the deciders to follow to get the second seed of the day. Okay, so still has a chance here, but for now in this series, Muzzy is going to be losing. All so right, this. that is it. That's a sweep <coughs> from Zelle. Look at that. Zelle with the Vape Nation symbol. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that had a big influence in, in that game. Otherwise, you know, where, where where's the point? Yeah, really. All right, guys, so Zelle will be, in a, will be advancing to the winner's round. Um, Muzzy will be uh, dropping down to the, the loser's match. Um, we didn't really see too much from Muzzy. I mean, we just saw the, the Shaman deck. We saw just tank three times. That's nothing new from that deck. Uh, looks like... Uh, from what we've seen so far, these two players have brought just uh, their favorite bunch of the decks uh, in the current meta. And uh, we'll have to see if um, if the next match, which is going to be Risen versus VLPS, is going to introduce anything new. We are going to take a little bit of a break um, as we, uh, as we uh, get ready for our second match of the day. I'll be back in just a few minutes. And uh, if you guys want to do something in the meantime, I do encourage you guys to check out geico.onog.gg. You guys can uh, throw your... Uh, Throw your chance to win uh, a sweet cyber power PC, and you can also, uh, if if you're courageous enough, uh, you can sign up to be participating in some of these open tournaments. Uh, Onaga is putting on quite a lot of open tournaments, um, and it's it's a great way to get started uh, in the scene um, if you want to give it a try. So check that out, guys, and we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> 